Well, hey, everybody, it's that time of the evening on a Sunday night. It's time to check in with uh, our, our star of the week. And this week, it happens to be Richard Pacheco. And Richard, it's so great to have you here. And I think they've uh, we, we brought out some of the other stars to see you today. We've got Eric Monty in the room, also Eric Edwards. And, and I think the whole crowd is here today. Hi, crowd. <laughs> Eric Edwards. How can I be the star if you're on the show? <laughs> I'm so the anyway, co-star. I'm a co-star here. It is so great to have you on. You've been on uh, once or twice already and uh, with just kind of hanging out and seeing what everything's uh, going on. And so I thought, you know, it's about time we have, have you in the room and we put you in the hot seat. So with your Steelers football shirt on, it's, it's time to talk to you. And, and um, uh, what, what's been going on lately in your life? Well, uh, living... Uh, with my wife at home, uh, not going out anywhere, if we can avoid it, having the groceries delivered. We are in Alameda County in Northern Pennsylvania, uh, California, which is the number one county in the state for coronavirus patients. Uh, some, I think LA may be overtaking us not, uh, briefly, if not uh, having done it already, but we keep a pretty tight ship. Um, sure. we're, in, we're in the wrong age group. And my wife has some breathing issues, so uh, we are trying not to bring that disease in the house. Well, uh, one thing that uh, is exciting is what you can do if you can't make it outside is you can pick up this, the new the book, the book that you've written. Yeah, I appreciate talk, that. Let's talk a little bit about you. You really did it up right for me. You really, you really personalized it up right there and, and, uh, and really gave it the old schmooze, didn't you? Well, I know that Patrick is a super fan. I'd seen him at a number of industry events, and he's, he was at more of them than I was. Um, so I wanted to pay tribute to uh, his dedication. Um, and I pay appreciation for what he does for us old fogies, uh, <laughs> giving us one more moment in the spotlight. Um, I bring out my book at this point because no matter how much I jabber, and I can jabber with the best of them, uh, we're only going to touch the surface of stuff. And I literally spent 30 fucking years writing my movie autobiography, uh, Hindsight, True Love and Mischief in the Golden Age of Porn. So I hardly recommend it. I think you'll find it informative, funny, poignant at times, um, and it, uh, an in-depth answer to any question that you're going to ask today it already exists in that book. Uh, now, today, well, today we'll just have fun. Certainly, you bet. And what we want to do is in the group, if you, I know you've got a link for the, the, the book itself, a web page for the book and how to order. Already, uh, Charles has asked, how do we get the book and how do we get it signed? So you've already sold one copy and we've been here four minutes. Great. Great. Hi, Kathy. Did anyway, you just, I'll, did you I'll, finish your reading already? Yes, I did. Sorry, I wasn't there. I was getting ready for this. I could imagine. I did, and we had no Zoom bombers, no Santa's Heine or anything like that this time. You're talking to Kathy, who under the name of Ariel Hart was a longtime X-rated screenwriter, um, co-author of the book uh, Raw Talent that she did with Jerry Butler, and a superhuman being. Thank you. I feel the same about you. Mwah. <laughs> See, we, we told you we were going to bring out the stars for you. So. <laughs> Uh, Eric Edwards is with us, and Eric, uh, how are we doing today? We, I mean, there you go. I'm unmuting. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, Kathy. Eric, good to see you again. Yeah, wow, well, that's so neat. Um, and uh, Howie, my gosh, look at you. Uh, I, uh, first of all, i got a couple of things to say to you. Uh, I finally finished your second book, and I'm going to plug it for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I uh, it was I, it took me over a year to, to read hindsight. So, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you can imagine I'm a slow reader anyway. Um, the one thing I liked about your new book is not only did it tell me a lot about um, your upbringing and and how you got into the business and and uh, just just your life in general. Uh, which was fascinating. Uh, first of all, I'm not Jewish, as you know. Uh, what was I, the, the token Goya? Is that what I was called? <laughs> Goyim. Go, uh, all right. Well, whatever. 
um, I, mean, you know, I, I really felt that way. I was like the only one that around that wasn't Jewish. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, your your second book, uh, I liked I liked it for several reasons. Um, first of all, I kept interested uh, because of the ending. I'm not going to reveal how the ending goes, but um, it, uh, it it kept me going because I wanted to find out. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, sure. So uh, I, I wanted to find out how everything pulls together and everything. And I, I like the, I also uh, really liked uh, the way that you slipped into the past very easily, like a greased pan or something. You, know, you just kind of, you're there all of a sudden. And whereas uh, maybe I, if I had written a book, I might have made a completely new chapter in saying back in 65, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And But no, you just kind of like went right into it. All of a sudden we're in a, on a football field with you. And I thought that was really cool. Um, but uh, it's, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's called, um, uh, return to Squirrel Hill, and first of all, hindsight was my fave, simply because you and I lived those days, and you really described them quite well. So it was like a flashback to me to to read all of those memories and everything that I had kind of forgotten about. But this new one is totally different, and I want to compliment you on it. Good Thank job. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a wonderful feeling to uh, talk to people like you and Kathy, who know that world, who were part of that world, and to have you uh, recognize uh, the truthfulness of, of what I've tried to present. Uh, I appreciate it. I certainly worked hard to do it. Um, and it's all, it's all there. The, the, the newer book that uh, Eric refers to, uh, is also a book that I wrote 30 years ago, first copy. And uh, I've been keeping diaries since 1965. So when I write, I go back to my diaries and that's where all the notes are. And I polish and polish and polish until it's ready to uh, harvest. And this is another book like that. There's no magic pee pee in the new book. That, I, I used up my whole pee pee quotient in hindsight. So it's nothing about my sex life. It's about family and friends and uh, memories. Uh, it's also 400 pages shorter, <laughs> which a lot of people are grateful for. Yes, I, and I, I like that a lot. I think I, I advised you on that, didn't I? Yes, you did. It also has big print, too. Big print and 400 pages shorter. Yep, yep. Good job. Yeah. All, All right. right. But really, if you want to learn a lot about uh, uh, Howie and Richard and uh, in his past and everything, and I'm amazed that you kept all these notes. My God, uh, that, that's really incredible because it was so real and accurate. Um, well, I had this wonderful phone call from, uh, I can't remember her name now, Jane Kaminsky or something. She's a, um, a Harvard uh, person, somewhere connected with the archives there. And she calls me up recently saying that she's doing a book about the donation of Candida Royale to the feminist movement. And she came across some letters between Candida and myself. And she uh, said, would you be willing to be interviewed for this book I'm writing? And I, I agreed to that. And uh, I mentioned somewhere along the line of my diaries and she got very excited and said, would you be willing to donate your diaries to Harvard? <laughs> which really cracks me up because I couldn't get into Harvard <laughs> when I tried to as an undergraduate. Uh, and now that I'm going to die, well, I'll say want my diaries. So my diaries well, can get Don't donate it. them. Make them buy them because I believe they have bought Candace's and Gloria Leonard's. Not a huge amount of money, but um, I think what you have to say is really important too. So stick out for a little money. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. What happened was I am I use my diaries. They're my 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 mind that's my or i go and mine the or in there and to write so i'm not giving them to anybody uh while i'm alive and when i die my kids get them and when they make their choice they don't care what they do with them so i said uh, nothing now and she didn't mention money but i'm glad to hear that you did mm -hmm. that's what seika who i'm sure you all have heard of 
Yes. Seika has tried to be my business mentor. Seika <laughs> has the first nickel she ever made. And <laughs> she, she can get your first nickel. <laughs> So she tries hard enough. So she's always yelling at me because I do autographs for nothing and, and I give away shit. And she goes, what's wrong with you? you, you know, how did you get to be a Jew? What, you, you're crazy. <laughs> well, and, that, and that is true. Uh, you should never sign anything for free in our group, uh, Richard. Just charge somebody 10 bucks, something, just to, uh, just to do it because they'll pay for it. And already now we're 11 minutes into the chat. And you've sold book number two, so. Oh boy! <laughs> I want to buy some. Where do I? Where do I sign up? And uh, and George, uh, you're the one who wants to buy one of those books. Uh, talk to us a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to read your and Richard. Thank you for sending me those autographs. They they were very interesting. Oh good, good. And um, Eric, sorry I missed your your interview. I had to work. Um, I heard it was a good one, but you know, I just want to say that. Patrick's doing a great job. You know, he's always, always helping you guys. And, you know, if he ever needs my help, even though I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, he knows that I will help him and whatever, whatever. And yeah, I'm in, interested in getting your book. So wherever we can get that information, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Well, to get an autographed copy from me, uh, and the, the autographed copy is free. <laughs> the book isn't. Uh, Obviously. Yeah. So the uh, www.hindsightbook, one word, hindsightbook.com, www.hindsightbook.com. Okay, perfect. I'll put that in the chat, but then later we'll also put that on the, on the web page with the link to the, the replay of this of this uh session so okay my, my new my newer book has a different uh address for ordering so i'll give you that too before we're done okay, okay. sounds good perfect thank you one of the cool things i have the privilege of is since i host this uh, i get to control everybody's mute button so uh i like to talk about this movie and this was up and coming and this was one of my favorite movies because for 17 years i was in radio and any time the disc jockey could get a blowjob, I was all for that. <laughs> and, and that looked like to me that you were going to play one of Marilyn's records in exchange, I believe, she uh, gave you some head. Yes, that was the deal. But she only gave me half the blowjob because oh. uh, she finished the blowjob when the song went to number one. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. So I, did, I never got the – I got half a blowjob. And then I was hoping offstage she would finish it. But uh, in those days, Chuck Trainer kept her on a pretty tight leash, so there was no offstage anything. Right. That was. I'll tell you about that movie. I had, uh, I had retired from the business. I had had a horrible experience with Svetlana and David Marsh. I won't go into that, but uh, we had our first baby, and I just fuck it, I'm done. And I get a call from uh, Stu Siegel from Miracle Films. They had the best logo in the business. The logo was, if it's a good film, it's a fucking miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and that was true. Um, so anyway, I had done the first, I had worked in Up and Coming and I got paid, it was all over. He calls me six months later after I'm in retirement and says, I need you to come back and shoot another scene. And I said, no. He said, what? <laughs> I said, no, I'm retired, I'm done. I'm not doing any more scenes. And he said, uh, how much you want? And I said, no, it's not going to happen. And I was making, I was making good money at that point in time. I was getting a thousand a day. So he said, how about 1200? <laughs> I said, no. He said, how about 1500? I said, I'm unretired. <laughs> okay. So now I'm back in this movie and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm fat. I've gained about 10, 15 pounds. In six months, I don't, I'm not doing my workout. I, I'm a newborn daddy. I'm up all night. I'm doing all that. Um, and uh, it's supposed to be uh, uh, another scene with Marilyn, a pick-me-up, you know, a pickup shot. So, but I have to fuck her again, which is not a bad day's work at all. Um, so, okay, but I'm real nervous about that. And the thing, I don't, you'll hear a lot about this in hindsight. I was one of the weakest sexual performers that industry ever had in it. Um, my first five movies, I had one erection. And the other four were just miserable uh, experiences where they'd have a stand-in for me. The only reason I had a career was I could act a little bit. 
And that was when they cared about that. So I, they'd hire me for that and take their chances. Eventually, through people like John Seaman and some other men who were kind enough to talk to me about how the fuck you do this, I got past terror and was able to do sex scenes. But no one would ever mistake me for John Leslie or any of the other great woodsmen of, of the era. Now, uh, let's talk about, maybe, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't. This, I bought this DVD probably year, oh, several years ago. This actually was the first full-length X-rated movie my girlfriend and now my wife at the time ever saw. She was the fan of the 1001 Pop Shots. She said, if I want to go see a movie with plot, I'll go see Private Saving Private Ryan. And so anyway, this was the first one that we watched together. That was a full, uh, full movie for her. But this one has included previous lost controversial scene. Do you remember what the lost controversial scene was at all? Well, um, I don't know what they're talking about, but I can tell you this. Um, I ended up making the movie. It wasn't just me and Marilyn. They had hired um, John Holmes and Herschel Savage and Lily Marlene to all be in this, these pickup shots that they were going to do. I guess the first one, we didn't have enough sex. Um, so I'm having... I do my scene. It's real easy. Uh, I'm getting a double blowjob from uh, Mar Lily and, and Marilyn. That's my favorite thing because it takes me a long time to come from a blowjob, especially on camera. And to have two women, by the time one gets tired, the other one jumps in. So you don't feel bad that you're keeping your know, woman's going to have to go see the dentist when she's done with you. Um, so I come and I'm wrapped and I'm done. And it was just, we were shooting at the home of a proctologist in Marin. And there was like a, a balcony over a living room and the food was laid out in the balcony. So I go up to the balcony to get myself some food. I got my check. I'm going home. And I start to hear these screams, screams. I mean, screams, the kind of screams you got. What's going on? And I look over the balcony and John Holmes is fucking Marilyn Chambers in the ass with that little league baseball bat he had for a dick. And Marilyn is, um, transported is the only word that occurs to me. She was doing the sexual equivalent of speaking in tongues and she was screaming and she wasn't screaming stop. It was the most electric thing I had ever seen. I could not take my eyes off this sex scene. It was incredible. It was the best sex scene I ever saw. Um, and I was stunned by it. I got, I had just come and I got another erection standing there watching it which never happens to me, um, but it happened then. And um, I end up, uh, I think that might be the scene. It was just a, a just an, in a very intense anal intercourse scene. I can't imagine what else happened in the movie. If something weirder than that happened, I didn't see it. Um, okay, well, it was the final scene. It was her, the, the country music up and comer huh, for the movie, finally met country legend, uh, I can't remember his first name, but the last name was Strayhorn. Mr. Strayhorn, and he set the guitar aside, and then you saw, you know, what he had. Well, that must have been the scene. Um, what's amazing is I told people for the next three or four months, you got to go see this movie. This is the greatest sex scene ever filmed. Yeah. Um, and when I finally did see the scene, they missed it completely. They had kept the camera locked down on the pussy, on the asshole dick shot oh. for like... 20 minutes that's all your that's all you, the magic was Marilyn's face all the magic was there she was like Bleh! she was out there and it was incredible to behold you don't see any of that you don't feel any of that they just missed it completely it was so sad to me okay well next up we uh Chris uh has raised his hand here we'll get Chris unmuted here and lower his hand and unmute the uh, thing Chris Hey, Gordon. Yo. How are you? We're friends on Facebook. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Great to see you. I, re I, I got your book, Hindsight, a while ago. Uh-huh. So I read it, I think I read it about two years ago. Okay. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to, you, to your next book. And also a shout out to, to Rob, who I'm, I'm very, very good friends with on, on Messenger. Uh, so uh, perhaps Patrick, I can I can give a shout out to Rob a little bit later. Uh, sure. my, my good bud. 
Trace. Um, but uh, so, uh, Gordy, do you have any uh, reflections? I know you're very close with uh, with John Leslie. Maybe tell yeah. us some some John Leslie stories. Wow, well, Jesus! There's a well, wow, at least one. First of all, when I first met him, I thought he was the biggest asshole I ever met in my life. Oh boy! Um, I was uh, before I got in the business. I used to go to the X-rated movies. There's a drive-in in Pittsburgh. And I remember I was in the backseat fucking my wife, and we're up on the screen was John Leslie and Joey Silvera. Uh, I don't remember the movie, but there they were. Okay, cut to a year later, I'm in my second movie. And I'm on the set, in walks John Leslie and Joey Silvera. Movie stars, wow! I go running up to them like a fucking puppy. I'm wagging my tail. I want to meet these guys. I want them to like me. I want them to be my friend. They... <laughs> start talking to each other like I'm not even there. And John is going like, first of all, they're, they're both really very Italian. And the conversation is John going, hey, hey, Joey, come here. Look at this one. Look at this one. Hey, 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 Joey, come here. And they, it gets ugly. They start insulting me. And I'm thinking, oh, OK, these guys are really assholes. And I get out of the line of fire. OK, cut to a year later. I'm in the business. I'm earning. I'm getting a bit of a reputation. I can walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, everybody said you got to meet Sam Weston. You got to meet Sam Weston. You got Anthony Spinelli was his stage name. He's the best. You're gonna work the best. You got to. So I meet Spinelli, and it's another story. He falls in love with me, and um, when he finds out that I have an uncle Izzy, who I was raised with, who's mentally retarded. He started telling me a story about a kid on his street, one where he grew up. The whole street used to take care of him. He was what they called mentally retarded in the old days. Now it's developmentally disabled. And he always wanted to make a movie about a guy like that. And when he meets me, he decides now it's time to make the movie. And he wants me to star in it with John Leslie. And I tell him, no. John Leslie's an asshole. I don't want any parts of it. And he said, no, John's great. You're going to love that. I said, no, I already met him. I'm not interested in being with John Leslie. And Sam says, you got to trust me. You're going to make magic with him. Trust me. All right. Fuck you. Um, and we go and do it. And now I'm working with him. And uh, Sam's movies, you rehearse, which was an oddity in the X-rated business by and large. And he's perfect for the part he's going to be playing. He's, he's the ladies' man. And that John can do with his eyes closed. Um, and so we make this movie and um, by the end of the movie we're, we're supposed to fall in love in, in character and by the end of the movie we got there I really did love him and I remember it was just him and me in the hotel room when they were wrapping the movie and I said to him in kind of a bemused voice you know John I really love you and he said what <laughs> I said I really love you. He said, you want to fuck me? <laughs> I said, no, I don't want to fuck you. He said, well, then calm the fuck down. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. All right. Charles is with us. Charles is uh, up from, uh, he's around the San Francisco area. And Charles, uh, what's going on with you today? Not much. I didn't know you had a second book out. Well, it just came out. Uh, I, I okay. had... I had a lot of um, plans to promote. You know, when it comes to selling, I feel like the Jew who didn't get the memo. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just don't like selling. Uh, I was raised, my father's, one of his favorite expressions was, self-praise stinks. And that's about the worst advice you can give to someone going into show business or trying to sell a book. Uh, I just don't like doing it. And so I don't like selling and I'm not very good at it. And then uh, I was determined, you know, one friend said, look, asshole, you wrote a great fucking book. He's talking about hindsight. What good is it if nobody reads it? You got to get out there and sell it. And anytime I think of that, I think of Ron Jeremy and God bless Ron. He's the best I've ever seen in self-promotion, but I don't have those genes. It's not in me. Um, so uh, I decided for this next book, I'm going to go do all this stuff that you're supposed to do. And Kathy gave me great advice. She was, she's, cause she's an author of four books now, is it? Shake your head. Cause I don't five. Um, so she was telling me things I can do and da da da. And she's like mini Seika trying to get me to get off my ass and, and learn how to promote myself. And, uh, 
I was going to do it. I was going to put on my big boy pants and, and do it. And then this whole pandemic fell. And I, the truth is, I was so relieved because <laughs> I, I didn't have to go on this promotional tour and do all this shit. But that's when this, the, the new book is good. It's different. Uh, and uh, it's out now. Actually, I went to my shelf and I looked and I was like, I have that book already. Because I thought I didn't realize you had written a new book more recent. Oh, the so, yeah, oh yeah. okay. Well, I need to reread that one because that was like a few years ago. I reread it all the time. Don't feel bad. It's one of my favorite books. Well, that's good. But you lived it already. I know, Beth. I'm trying. I, I, my memory's starting to slip. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had that feeling too. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I just I'm do it for fun. Forward to the new book and get hopefully getting it signed, and Patrick will set that up, and you know. Okay. So. My, my pleasure. Thanks for okay. your support. So, uh, <laughs> what is I, what is the title of the new book? Return to Squirrel Hill. Squirrel Hill okay. is the, the the community I grew up in in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know, by the way, John Leslie was about 30 miles away in a town called Beaver, believe it or not. John Leslie was born in Beaver, Pennsylvania. I've heard of Beaver, Pennsylvania. You know, when, uh, nice. when, when John passed away, of course. Uh, I went to uh, all of the memorials they had for him. And one of them was with his family in Beaver. And mm -hmm. it was so odd to go sit around and meet his clan because they all have the same face. And there oh. was like, you know, 60, there were like 30, 40 versions of John's face there. Um, he had the best one of them. Um, but they right. all, they all, you could tell they were all from the same gene pool. I have a question now. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I don't know why I flashed on this, but you're probably from the era of when our films uh, would be shown in theaters. Yes. Did you ever go and see yourself on the big screen? Oh, many times. Many times. In fact, I have a uh, wonderful story about that. But you, go ahead wait, with your question. Well, I, uh, that was my question, actually. Have you, because the first time I saw myself on the big screen was at the opening of Firestorm. And stupidly, I sat down fairly close to the screen because I kind of wanted to shrink down in my seat. I was a little, you know, shy. We had done a cementing out in front of the theater, which is still there, by the way, uh, Kay Parker and I. But when I saw myself up there on this humongous screen, yeah, I was floored. I mean, I don't know what your reaction to it was. Uh, was it nothing to hide? Was that the first no, thing? no, no? I saw much earlier. My first leading role was a movie called Baby Love and Bow. Um, it was made for thirty-five cents in San Francisco by uh, a guy named Damian Lee. And uh, my first starring role. So when it comes out, I go see it. And oh, <laughs> it is so bad. Uh, I, and I'm not even talking about the movie, I just me. You know, I, I, I was so ashamed of myself. Uh, I, I, there was only one line out of maybe a, a hundred in the movie where I wasn't embarrassed that it came out of my mouth, just one. And I just vowed at that point, because you get this real, well, you, you know it yourself. You're on a set and people are telling you, oh, you're great, that's good, oh, great, great. You think you're doing something. And then you see it yourself and you apply your own standards to what you see. And you realize it doesn't matter what anybody says. You know, you really have to pay attention to what you're doing and try to do the best work you can. Um, and I, I approached uh, my work much more assiduously after that experience. My favorite experience seeing myself um, was in Berkeley. There's a, a, an X-rated cinema around the corner from where I lived, and I hadn't seen the movie that was playing there. This is pretty early in my career. And so I walk up there, and uh, I go into the movie theater, and this is the kind of, it's such a small theater, it's the kind of place where the guy that sells the tickets also sells the popcorn uh, and stuff. And uh, I walk in, and he goes, he recognizes me right away. And he says, Richard Pacheco, he was Latino himself. So, how you doing? Um, and he says to his wife, this is Richard Pacheco. He's in this movie. And, blah, blah. and uh, he, they're all excited. Give me my popcorn for free. <laughs> Extra butter. Now, that's great. And he says, he said, would you mind, and I'll drop the accent, because that's what we do for racism nowadays. Um, he says, would you mind waiting a few more minutes before you go sit down? Because Herbie's coming. And Herbie's a big fan of yours. He saw you in, in Nothing to Hide and Talk Dirty, and he really wants to meet you. So 
he'll just love that you're here. Would you? Okay, I'll wait. So we're sitting around small talking, and he's asking me things. Is John Holmes' dick really that big? Yeah, it really is. And uh, what's Kay Parker like? And I just love her. And blah, blah. and then Herbie shows up at the door. He's about 60 feet away from where we're talking. He's got braces on his legs, and he's got two um, cane-like things that he's using to walk. He's I'm, I'm in my late 20s, early 30s. He looks old to me. Uh, nowadays, I would guess he was maybe in his 50s. And he starts walking from the street to the concession stand, and it takes him a, like five minutes to get there. And he finally gets there, and I'm watching this whole thing, and I'm, I'm realizing coming to this theater, seeing these sex scenes, this is his sex life, period. This is what passes for sex when you have a life like that. Um, and it really just, just stabbed me right in the heart. And, uh, you know, he looked at it and the guy said, oh, Herbie, this is Richard Pacheco. You, you know, and he looks up at me and it takes him like five minutes to turn his head. And uh, uh, he just got a little smile and he puts up a hand for me to shake and I very gently shook his hand. And, This was the best face that our industry has. We perform for people who aren't going to have their own women ever, or unless they pay for it. And even then, it, anyway, it just made me, gave me a whole different take on the industry. I was proud to play the roles I played. Uh, you know, I had a very niche role in the big picture. I would never be what anybody would mistake as a super dick. <laughs> Those guys were there. I don't belong in the conversation when it comes to them. But I did fulfill a role, and I did my best to fulfill it well. It's good. I wish you and I had had more scenes together. I mean, uh, really, there, there was just a small handful of us back then that um, – that were good actors that could handle lines and you could toss them a script no matter how thick it was or thin or how many lines you would have and we would know our lines we would show up on time and we would do our thing and uh you are one of those that i wish that we had uh, been cast together and i've always wondered why that was well i have two good answers for you because they couldn't afford both of us <laughs> <laughs> oh well well first of all you were you were in New York and I was never in New York. I was in New York for one movie at the end of my career, Candida brought me back. Uh but we didn't meet till late in the game for me. Uh, but what happened was this. We were part of the experiment where spending more money making better movies was tried. Mm -hmm. And what they found out was, and I'm sure you know this because you stayed on, um if they spent fifty thousand dollars to make the movie or if they spent $150,000 to make the movie, which was the case of Talk Dirty and Nothing to Hide. They spent more money on those. Um, the return on the movies was going to be the same as the $50,000 movie because it only could play the same venues. There was no video at the time. Video hadn't really begun yet. So you weren't going to make any more money because our movies were never going to play at the regular theaters. Um, and once, once the businessmen realized putting more money into it cuts profit, that was the end of that era. Uh, occasionally, a movie will get made for vanity's sake. Like, Nothing to Hide really was a vanity movie because the producer of that movie got sick of the other people getting to get their awards at the banquets. And he wanted to turn getting an award. So he opened up his wallet to Sam Weston's and made me an award winner. And that's how Nothing to Hide got made. But it already was like a dinosaur in terms of uh, big big budget motion pictures that was over like by 83 84 at the latest and then by then video had got its claws in the whole thing and every price has just all plummeted oh the other reason was AIDS 1984 November 10th 1984 first headline in San Francisco of the heterosexual transmission of AIDS um, a good friend of mine who was a mathematician came over to my house that afternoon said, I've been doing some calculations based on these numbers in the Chronicle. You need to retire now. 
Um, I don't want to hear that because it was my first turn at going to Hefner's Hot Tub. And uh, I like that and, and all that stuff, which I know you're familiar with. Um, all right. So I, I wanted to make the movies. And uh, I had three lined up for December. And my wife and I argued about it. And I said, I'm going to go make them. And I went and made them. And when I came home, at the end of the three movies, we went to bed that night. And I reached for her. And she said, do you think we ought to? And I said in my best John Nuzzo voice, what? <laughs> she said, quote, don't you think it would be prudent if one of us remained alive to raise the kids? And that was the brick wall. I woke up the next morning, retired and monogamous. Oi. All right. Uh, Eric Monty is with us. Eric had some uh, time in the adult uh, business. And uh, Eric... How are you doing this morning, this afternoon? I'm doing fine. I'll just tell her to Kathy. Can Kathy, hear me? Yep. Yes. How are you, Eric? Good to see you. I'm fine. We have yeah, a Philly am... guy and a Pittsburgh guy. Pennsylvania's in the house. Yeah, I'm a South Philly guy, too, uh, 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 Richard. I'm one of those Italians. Yeah, <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? All right, how about you? <laughs> Did you eat yet? <laughs> anyway... No, I um, I wanted to introduce my friend Paul, but he had to go for some temporarily. He's new to the group. But I uh, agree with you. Uh, by the way, um, I wanted to say one other thing, by the way. Um, is Chris Quasi on here? Chris? Yeah. Because I, I put a, fa a Facebook friend, yep. and I, I mentioned, but he probably recognized my name. Right, I used another name. I, uh, I think, did I did befriend you? No, I'm Richard Kent, you know. You know, Richard, I, the, the fugitive name with Kimball on Facebook. Oh, anyway. Kimball. Okay, yes, I saw that. I will. Yeah, and Robin, to say hello to you. I, I have much, not much to say, but I'm agreeing with, uh, with Richard Pacheco about the money, about the money aspect. You know, put fifty. That right away, I know what he was going to say was that was the truth. Whether you put fifty grand or one hundred fifty grand, and returns the same. You know, and that that was that. And um, I was I was in the business, Richard, from '83 to '99, but not really making that many. I made about like 80, 90 films altogether. But uh, same as you, I was kind of a you know character actor. I was never really a big, big a big name or whatever. But um, that's about. I must I have much to say. Really. All right. Okay. Well, hey, I, I appreciate you being here. And and Lance has raised his hand. Lance, what's going on with you tonight? How you doing, Patrick? Yeah. Howie. I mean, Richard. How are you doing? I'm doing good, and Howie's my name. That's I don't I don't pay. Everybody on the set always call me Howie. Richard was just uh, keep the crazies from my front door. I was just gonna say I want to reiterate the uh, the book hindsight was an outstanding read, unequivocally. I really enjoyed it. Very very candid, very humorous. I really enjoyed it. Um, since uh, you're gonna try to sell that. Uh, that information to Harvard. Just want to let you know, I lived in Harvard Square 20 years. My whole family's Harvard MIT. My father's Harvard. My mother's brothers are Harvard. My cousins. I went to Harvard Business School Leadership Program. Shove it up their ass. <laughs> take it up. Take them for every fucking dime you can get from those cheap ass motherfuckers. Especially when they tried to get nine million dollars on this uh, small business loan. They suck. I got no fucking respect for them anymore. Even though my whole fucking family's have it. Shove it up their ass. I'll tell you what. So take they, them if you can for every fucking cent you can take from them. If they right? call me if they call me back, I'm calling you and I want you to be my agent. Well, but the thing is, is I think I'll blow it for you. That's the problem. You That's know, fine with I, me. I'll enjoy I'm that. I'll enjoy it. the fuck out of that. That'd be hey, great. My father was thirty nine. My uncle was forty six. My cousin was uh 88, you know, I mean, it, they're fucking, they're assholes there. Anyway, why did you, uh, why did you uh, settle in Frisco? I didn't. I settled in, well, actually, I first came in, uh, I was working in the par in poverty programs in Washington, D.C. The people I worked for were the people that invented poverty programs. They did an experimental program in New Haven. Uh, they were backed by the Ford Foundation with an open checkbook. The Ford Foundation wanted them to succeed. Uh, hi, Harvey. Herschel Savage just showed up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they wanted to succeed. They went from there to Boston, where they ran ABCD. Uh, uh -huh. They succeeded there. Now they went to Washington, where they were going to do the national poverty programs. 
Um, wow. So yeah, I have I'm, a couple of other real couple of uh, real quick questions here. Um, I, well, I, all right, go ahead. What are your thoughts on Jeremy and what he's going through right now? Oh, um, the chickens come home to roost. Really? So it's kind of a long-standing thing, or what? Well, Ron had a reputation for for uh, pushing things. Um, so did Harvey Weinstein. Um, <laughs> you know, it used to be acceptable behavior. What the crime is is that the times have changed. Right. That's you know because what we used to be able to do with impunity, we're now having to pay for. Um, Hopefully, that's going to apply to cops as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What woman did you enjoy having sex with the most in your uh, movies? The next one. The next one. I love the it. The next one. I love it. That's a great I, answer. I got that from John Leslie. Did you ever uh, jerk off to your own movies? Well, not looking at my ass, but whoever I was with, yeah. In fact, you did. That was that was better than. I wasn't getting any pleasure out of working. That I think I out of a. At least a hundred sex scenes. I liked three of them. A uh, person. Really? Me personally. Wow. I I was working. I'm working here. I'm working here. And there wasn't time to enjoy it. Where I would enjoy it, it was when I'd watch it later and I'd have jerk off and I'd have the pleasure I didn't have when I was working. That's okay. what I. So you actually did enjoy looking at yourself after the fact. Then. Okay. Well, I relived the sex scene, but I could now I could have the pleasure without thinking about with the director in my ear telling me to move to another shot or whatever they're telling you. Okay. Okay. Do you happen to know that, like, I know your colleague there, Kathy, wrote the book with Butler. Is there any reason why Butler badmouthed everybody in the business? Do you happen to know? Or? You know, a complex fellow. Um, bat shit crazy. Bat shit crazy. I worked with him enough to see it firsthand. I won't, I won't even tell the stories. Just trust me on that. But a brilliant, brilliant actor. Um, and I think, you know, the finest actors I've ever met in my life are crazy, which is the irony of all ironies that we make them uh, social heroes and we ask <laughs> for their opinions because they're not even there. The best actors have no self. <laughs> they can become anybody. And they're, they're leave, left alone to be themselves. There's not much of strength of ego there other than right. the movie stars. Um, right. So that, that's irony to me. But Jerry was a great uh, uh, actor. He also was very, very funny. Um, what got hard to deal with is when the manic part of him met cocaine. Mm -hmm. that, that's not a good combination. He didn't need cocaine to be manic. Um, he lived there. That was, that was the home team. And when you put those two together, that's when he started crossing a lot of lines that uh, weren't helpful for his career or his relationships. But um, he, was a, he was a pleasure to work with, uh, if you could put up with the craziness. Anyway, hey, Herschel Savage is in the room, uh, Richard. So yeah, man, we don't we don't, we don't want to uh, Richard to stop talking. I mean, I'll just sit here for a couple <laughs> minutes. You know, it's his moment in the sun. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Very very fucking polite, Howie. Very fucking polite. All right. Hey, hey is, I, I are you are you are you the fucking guest of honor here? Yeah. Well, you were my guest of honor, and I shut the fuck up. So you. Well, could that was oh, yesterday, whatever. and yesterday's gone. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. <laughs> anyway, hi everybody. How you doing? Um, I'm glad you have your moment here. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to visit Ron in jail this week. You know, I don't think well. he's got anyone, so I, I'm not joking. I mean, you know, I just want to give him a little bit of encouragement and slip him some cyanide, whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's a sad state of affairs, really. I mean, yes, it is. I mean the, the, the light of, of, of um, our industry is not shining brighter on the male town because of something like this, you know. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, as I said, you know, there's nothing I'm hearing about Ron that I didn't hear about Jamie. Uh, Jamie? Was, yeah. Jamie? Jamie raping? Non-consensual stuff. Crossing boundaries. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, you make agreements before you go on camera what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. And Jamie routinely just, you know, Brando and Bertolucci. Yeah. That's what they did. You yeah. know? The whole anal intercourse scene from Last Tango in Paris. 
this is repeated shit, you know, uh, you know, no, there's no excuse at any time for something like this. Certainly when you're in a position of power, like it's the devaluation of women. But uh, uh, I never heard through the years of, you know, Jamie was a freak, obviously, but I never, ever heard stories where he forced himself on somebody. He was not that way. I mean, he was, he had hygiene issues, but uh I don't I don't know him to have been considered a rapist, but he might have been inappropriate at times. But, you know, Jamie was the kind of sex freak that people would just go, oh, OK. <laughs> you know, with, or with Ronnie, he's, 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 he's forcing them in a bathroom to submit. It's, I, right. I've spoken to at least two women that encountered this. So he's ob- absolutely fucked. I mean, he did it. I mean, he's only the third person to be charged in L.A. by the district attorney outside of Harvey Weinstein and this producer of uh, David Gallud or something like that. So they waited two years to, to they wait they waited two years uh, to do this. So um, if they, if they well, went some ahead, of it, some he, of the, the, the initial done. charges from 2014. So that's six years. Well, but but they were working on the case for two years. Yeah. This is what I've read, anyway. So, hey, believe me, they wouldn't have gone forward unless. Yeah, I I, I don't I, I didn't mean to bring this into the. I don't even know if you were talking about Ron, but uh, I thought it was a pretty big story. Yeah. Well, any porn story nowadays, it's the elephant in the room. I would add this bit of information to the story at this point. It is very difficult for a porn actress to get any traction in a mainstream media or a mainstream court for any complaint that happens to her because she's a porn star. She obviously is asking for it. The the, the, the bottom line is the the charges were brought by non-adult film actresses. Well, that gives them strength. That makes them stronger. If it was just adult film actresses, yeah, it might not have gone anywhere. But he, he went everywhere. He, he was appropriate, man. I, you know, he never did stuff like that around me. Not that I was around him that much, but, you know, if I if I saw stupid behavior on a set, I always spoke out, which I didn't. But uh, he crossed the line. There's no question about it. You know, what are you going to do, man? It's pretty fucked up, man. And what I don't understand is why he didn't post bail. He's going to just stay in jail till August 31st? I mean, he's he's worth millions. I mean, he could absolutely post. Just think of the bail that was set, six and a half million bucks. That's more than the guy that killed George Floyd. I, I mean, this is this is an outrageous sum. I mean, you don't you don't you don't even see this for Roger Stone. He's not posting six million dollars bail. It's it's crazy. It really is. I mean, the Me Too movement. Don't, <laughs> better wake up. You know. Anyway, sad. All right, let's hey, let's go over to Aaron because we haven't talked. Usually, I start in alphabetical order. Now I'm reverse alphabetical order, and Aaron is with us uh, from Florida. What's going on today, Aaron? It's kind of funny during all of this. I've actually been talking to, uh, chatting a little bit with Scotty Schwartz. Yeah. Um, on my other monitor, and I told him that uh, Richard, Eric, and Herschel and Kathy were all in the room, and uh, he wanted Eric, me to give a big Eric shout out to all of you. He said he's sorry he couldn't uh, be here this evening. Um, I- I'm using censored. I'm being a little bit more censored than he was. But uh, <laughs> he, uh, uh, him and I have been friends for quite some time, and uh, he really wanted to try to make it uh, tonight. But he had a he had some sort of big dinner tonight. But uh, he wanted to give a shout out to Richard, and then it when I told everybody right. else that was in the room, I. Uh, he was like, "Yeah, give a big shout out to them too." He's like, "Jesus Christ, I wish I should have been there." And then I, and then I said, "Hey, you might want to hop in." He goes, "Why?" Well, I said, "Herschel just showed up, and he's talking about Ron." And he's like, "Oh, Jesus Christ, I wish I wasn't missing this shit." So, um, yeah. So, yeah, big shout out. Can you hear me? Can you hear I me? Can, you. can you hear yes. me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you. He's got no big fucking dinner. It's a pandemic. He's watching Netflix. That's it. You know, that's it. <laughs> Don't go fuck himself, all right? I will, I will convey that, I promise. Uh, right. But uh, I, I just want to say, I think, you know, I just think that overall this is a pretty amazing group in here tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I've just been sitting in and, and taking it all in, and I really appreciate it. Herschel, thank you for 
adding me um, as a friend on Facebook. And um, Howie, I, I sent you a request, and I hope you will accept as well. Sure. And uh, you have Eric muted. Could you unmute Eric? Yep. I can do it. Where's Eric? Where's your face, Eric? Uh, There's Eric right there. I, I'm uh, the top and, uh, Eric, how are you? Where I belong. Good also, to also too, Eric, I did send you a uh, Facebook friends request, and I hope you will um, accept it. I would be honored. I will look for it. I Thank you. I, I, I would appreciate that from all of you. And Eric, um, Eric, Eric don't do it. Don't do it. He, he's been stalking me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Hold on now. Let's be Eric careful cool this, Herschel. <laughs> Drop the bomb in the entire room. Eric so hold on a second. But I, I just want to say I think this is great that Kathy and Richard and Eric and, and Herschel and Eric all showed up for this. And I just wish that uh, there'd be, uh, you know, more of this type of interaction in the future. So thank you all for coming in. All right. Well, hey, Mark is with us. And Mark just got here. And Mark, what's going on? Where are you from? How you doing, buddy? Good. Uh, you finally let me into the room. Oh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> finally. Yeah, yeah. Where are you from, Mark? I can't. I can't remember. Fort Lauderdale. There we go. All yeah, right. yeah. What's your question for uh, Richard tonight? Well, Richard, we've been friends on Facebook a while. It's finally nice to finally get to say hello to you in person. I guess hello. As close to person as we can get, right? Yeah. I'm a big fan of you and uh, John back in the day. Uh, great memories there. <laughs> You know, Thank he's you. Uh, you. spectacular, spectacular actors back then. You know, it, you don't get that kind of movies from porn these days. But, uh, hey, <laughs> I don't well, really have a question, but <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm tempted. I'm, I'll do a promo for my son. My son has just directed his first movie. Uh, it's called uh, Estate Sale Pleasure Hunt. It's a 23 minute video that he's doing for Erica Lust, and uh, it's uh, it's really kicking porn into the next generation stuff. They're very involved with feminist politics, gender issues, right. um, and uh, racial, big on interracial stuff. Okay. Uh, so, and acting is obviously part of the equation. It's not just a sex scene a loop thing where they they're actually trying to introduce the word art. Um, well, you know. Which, yeah, well, I mean, back in the day, I mean, that's what it was. To me, yeah. It was, it was well, we, were, we were trying. <laughs> we were trying. Yeah. It was good stuff. I mean, it was very entertaining. I mean, it's not uh, I, bad I, either. <laughs> I've, I've, seen, I've seen Howie's son uh, perform um, an improv show of sorts, and he's, uh, he really is a super talented man. So I rec uh, I'd love to get the link, Howie. He's great, man. So yeah. And I didn't get to uh, come to your meeting, uh, Herschel. Uh, it's nice to meet you finally. <laughs> What's your name? Mark. Hi, Mark. Mark. Nice yeah. to meet. You. Nice to meet you yeah, too. I, you know, I I, tr I haven't been on any other videos, uh, and I wanted to be, but I was tied up. I know I'm I'm like Scotty Schwartz. Yeah, I had a big dinner, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, but I, I I did it because I was so happy that Howie was on my broadcast, you know, and uh, so uh, it'll never well, happen again. But anyway, nice to meet you, more. Nice to meet you. And by the way, one of your, one of my favorite movies you were in was where you were uh, portraying uh, Bill Clinton <laughs> with uh, Monica. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? I, I I'm I'm very proud of. I thought I did a pretty damn good Clinton. You did a damn good job in that. Very good in that. Yeah, co star wasn't bad either. Asia was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and, and the and the woman blowing me. Uh, uh, Asia, Asia. Oh my god. Asia, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she died. Uh, sadly, what a great blowjob. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good movie. Do you remember the name of it? It's really good. Um, uh, God, I can't remember what from the yeah. oral office or something or, like oral that. Oral office. Yeah, oral. Yeah, office. yeah, yeah that's right. Good, that was it. Yeah, that was a Fred Lincoln production, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll give somebody else a chance, but it's really great to meet you guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Great to have you here. Uh, Richard, where did Dewey Alexander come in at? Dewey Alexander came in. Um, I was using a different name for every movie in the beginning, and I was uh, McKinley Howard, Mark Howard, Mac Howard. Then I just tried to change the uh, direction. I chose Dewey Alexander for Hot Legs. 
uh, and it was Dewey from Huey, Dewey, and Louie, Donald Duck's nephews. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Herschel. And Alexander was for Alexander the Great, a man who needed no introduction. All right, great. Uh, and Paul, I Paul is with us. And Paul, I just, you were here, then you left, now you're back. And what's going on tonight with you, Paul? Uh, sorry about that, just some uh, family obligations, but I just wanted to thank all of you for inviting me. Uh, thank my uh, good uh, lifelong friend, Eric Monty, who I've known my whole life, um, just for uh, inviting me to this group. So thank you. Any question for uh, Richard tonight? Um, I guess the question I have would be, if you could, um, what was the like, one star that you look forward to uh, acting with? Were there any stars where you said that, you know, you don't have to pay me, just uh, I'll be there? Um, no, I, you had to pay me. <laughs> uh, you're talking about male or female, or does it matter? Female. Female. Well, the ones who got away are always the most interesting. Uh, Leslie Beauvais, I saw off camera, never had a chance to work with her. She looked absolutely scrumptious. Uh, Amber Hunt. Amber Hunt, is that her name, uh, Eric? Early Wasn't on? She taxi girls? Cry for Cindy. The star of Cry for Cindy. A Amber Hunt, I think, was her name. John Seaman had the hot I, ever with her. I, I never sure. got there either. Um, <laughs> Um, a difficult question, isn't it? Kind of. It is. Yes. The, the ones you have, it's like you know. Okay, I've been there, done that. You know, what else can you show me? Um, I, I find it. I'll just say this: that when I would be having my troubles in the early days, trying to get an erection, and the star, whoever I was working with, would be blowing me, and it's not working, I would close my eyes, and I would start having sexual fantasies of my wife. <laughs> now, I describe this as God laughing, because the whole reason I got into the business was to taste some of these forbidden fruits and these sexual, lusty, blah, and here I am not being able to get hard, and I'm having to think about Howie, my can, wife Howie, to get hard on. Howie, can I add something to that? I'm so, sure you can. Okay. Uh, no, I'm serious. I'm uh, uh, not in any negative way, but... Uh, the the times I had great difficulty in performing with a, a woman um, using a substitute in my mind never worked. If that's the bottom line, it was <laughs> just that's how it worked for me. If it worked for you, great. But for it me, got me through like, it. It got me through it. And, and oh, the irony great. never. Yeah, I, the, I, it, it was it, just, physically, I wasn't there. It was like that's it. The know? irony was dripping. All right, Eric uh, Monty is with us, and Eric, uh, you said you have a quick, quick Ron story. You only got a couple minutes left, and so we'll take that. Unmute, yeah, there, Bob. I, oops, I got unmute, yeah. Can't. Uh, there you go. Then, like, there you go. We were going to go to a shoot in about an hour. Ronnie was always giving me these different things, and he's in my bathroom, and he's in there for all these strange sounds. And I said, "What the hell is he doing?" And I go into the bathroom, and he's brushing his teeth with my toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I says, Ronnie, what the hell is and he goes, Come on, Richard boy. You know, you end up eating all this pussy and you worry about two and I threw it out. <laughs> He's the weird thing about hygienic stuff. That could be the grossest thing I ever did. <laughs> all right. Chris, we'll come around to you. You got your hand up, so we'll uh we'll we'll get to you one more time before we, we head out here. So Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to give a shout out to uh to Rob, Eric Edwards. We, we speak, uh, probably we, we chat on Messenger at least once a week. More than that. He, he, he gives me my homework assignment every weekend. And hey, Rob. How you doing? How you, we finally, more, after more? all these years, we're finally conversing here. This How is, are you, my uh, friend? Totally different than chatting, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, you know Rob is, he's, oh, he's such a gentleman. He's wonderful. And he talks to me, the loudmouth from New York City. But, you know, he, I, I bring up all the times when he lived here in the city and back in the 70s. And I, I go and I, I take pictures of his, of his old building where he used to live. And, I, I, you know, 
I kind of rem re remind him of the good old days back in New York City. I give you I, advice on I give you advice on your love life. Yes, yes. What life? What life was that again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's very short. It's very short advice, but uh, yeah, it's it's great. And and so, uh, you know, Rob, uh, thank you. And finally, we got we got to meet in person. So, uh, always a pleasure. And also, I'm 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 a friends with Herschel on on Facebook as well. And shout out to you, Herschel. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Nice to meet you again. Yeah. Look, guys, I got—I got to run. I li literally have my son coming over, which is rare during the pandemic. So, let me uh, thank uh, Pat for putting it together. Richard, you're a good man. You raised great children. You have a good wife. Yeah. Fuck you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jorge, nice to see you again. Eric, nice to meet you. Aaron, I was joking, of course. Thank you, Eric. I love you, man. <laughs> You were, the, you were the, a big star when I started, man. You came over to me in the corner of a shoot in a, in a warehouse in Manhattan. You said, what is that you're chanting? Anyway, <laughs> Lance, take care. Chris, Mark, Kathy, hi. Nice to meet Hello. you. Good to Ralph, see. take care. Oh. Herschel, Herschel, care, you Dude. really have to do something about that shyness problem. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Herschel, really quick. I know you're going to be seeing Patrick in August. And I just wanted to say uh, thank you ahead of time for uh, signing my poster. He'll be showing you. My, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. My thank pleasure. you very much. I'll, I'll see you in August. Well, you'll be seeing him, but you'll be seeing the poster in August. And I'm just thrilled you'll be signing it. I, I'm, okay. I'm going to make sure there's any sweet corn butter on it. That's the main thing. No sweet corn butter. All right, take care, Herschel. Anyway, that's going to wrap up our uh, our hour. We've had a great time. Uh, the, the book kind of says it all. This back cover uh, really says it all, I think, and it's called And They Lived Happily Ever After, and that's a, a great, great segment there. And I really appreciate you being with us, and uh, we'll, we'll post some links. And, uh, again, a real pleasure. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. Thank you, Pat, and everybody right. else. And Lance, you, I got to say, you've got more character in your face than the entire movie industry. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you. That's that's going to do it. And we'll, uh, next week we have John Martin, so stay tuned for that. I know he's it's going to be guy. a Fourth of July weekend, but, but John will be a great guest, and I uh, hope you all come in and, and tune in for that. So anyway, till next week, we see you later. <laughs>